so Shannon, thanks so much for hopping in here. And it was really quick. I mean, so I, I had a conversation with Johnny Vance, which is a previous episode, and Johnny actually worked on a super successful campaign for you guys with the Harmon Brothers that right. my stepmom sent to me and was like, this reminds me of stuff that you're trying to do. This is amazing. So uh, talk to me a little bit more about how you got to the point where you're ready to do an ad campaign and you found the Harmon Brothers to do it. I, I think, well, first of all, the reason I responded so quickly to you is because I have a tremendous love in my heart for Johnny Vance. The Harmon Brothers and the team there, like you can say Harmon Brothers overarching, and it is a collaborative effort. It is the collective effort of many people on that team. But Johnny Vance, I'm telling you, that guy is going to be winning Tony Awards and he's going to be doing a lot more than what he's doing right now. I just, I, I think I'm his number one fan. So when I listened in on that, there were so many little tidbits that I thought, he's not mentioning Lumi. I'm sure out of respect for Lumi, but there is a Lumi story there that I could share that might even emphasize some of the points he was trying to make more and out of respect for our brand, he was probably trying to maintain privacy. So I I'm would love that. Please do. So I'm at a point right now where I think I do have an ability to look through the retrospectoscope and say, what was our, our journey and what brought us to Harmon Brothers? And I think it was a lot of trial and error. Um, we knew that we probably needed some help with, um, marketing because I knew nothing about social media marketing. I knew how to get on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as a user, but as a brand, um, we, you know, we, I'm a physician, I'm an OBGYN. I am not a business owner, but I'm very entrepreneurial in just about everything I've ever approached. It's all about getting to the finish line, um, as efficiently and effectively as possible. And how could we do this better, whether it's studying for a test or launching a brand. So, um, I met with, so many agencies that they come, they bring those A players out and they sit down with you and they make you feel like you are the next big thing, right? And I actually knew that we were a big thing, but I think they tell everybody this, like, we can do this, we can change, you know, with the, the um, landscape for you and we'll get the word out. And then you sign the contract and then here come the C players, right? Mm -hmm. And they've got a seven year plan to make you a brand. And I'm like, seven years? Like, I'm talking like, I want this in seven months. And uh, I feel like I have a brand story to share. And they kept trying to steer me in a different direction that was more generic. It was very familiar. We, they wanted to make us look like every other brand that was in our category. And I thought, I, I need you to listen to what our authentic brand story is because it is it is an unbelievable story of problem solution. And they just brought out a lot of generic copy and clip art graphics. And I thought, my gosh, my 13 year old could do this, you know? And so I just continued to get more and more frustrated as I realized that they wanted to put a spike in me as a client, spend a bunch of money. They had a long-term plan with no plan for immediate success, which is what we needed. So they oversold themselves, underperformed, and I went through three different agencies like this. So how did you go about, before we get to the Harmon brothers and, and you know, obviously they're amazing. Um, and I have a huge crush on, advertising crush on Johnny Vance. You know, I admit I, it. I think everyone who meets Johnny Vance has a crush. Yeah. yeah. Poopocalypse, are you going to get the card game? I was, I was part of the Kickstarter. I contributed <laughs> as a, I think I'm a VIP contributor. Yeah, I backed <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I can't wait to get it. Um, so how did you go about, like, at what point were you just like, I'm ready for, like, a, I guess, a bigger budget advertising spend. I need to find somebody. How did you go about trying to even find an advertising agency? Well, it's no secret that uh, Poopery and uh, Squatty Potty had incredibly funny and effective ad campaigns. And I knew that a deodorant for both underarms and private parts uh, was going to fit very nicely within the Harmon Brothers wheelhouse. So I reached out to them and they have a vetting process that they put brands through. And we were fortunate enough to really be chosen by them. We picked Harmon, meaning I reached out to them. I asked them to the prom. But before they said yes, they really, they had to pull back the covers and look in every closet and look at our finances and what they felt was, what our potential was. And I really, when you talk about a, a budget, we didn't have one. This, we are a self-funded brand. My husband and I have 
mortgaged our homes, we have emptied our 401ks, we have exhausted the couch cushion quarters, and we risked everything to do this Harmon Brothers ad. And I don't want to use the word misled them, but I, I really, I, I led them to believe that financially we were sound enough to take this risk because they thought this could destroy you financially if it doesn't work out and there's no promise. But I was so certain that they were going to be able to deliver the message that if we could, we, because of the, it's like advertainment, right? A deodorant for underarms and private parts is funny. Like everybody stops and goes, Are, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Cause it's, there's a, there's a humorous element to it. And I think that I knew that that equation of Lumi plus Harmon Brothers was going to equal tremendous success. And I think that I was more sure of it than maybe even they were. And the risk that we were taking was a Lumi risk, but really it was a personal risk. My husband and I and um, just risked everything and took that chance. And thankfully we did because our first year, and we did really well our first year in sales. Like we, we launched October, 2017. And that first calendar year, we'd done like, oh, uh, maybe um, just short of two million. And then that November, December, before our first Harmon Brothers la ad launch, we were really starting to gain traction as a brand. So in that first 14 months, we did about 2.5 million in sales, which is still excellent, right? If I was standing, you know, in front of the sharks on Shark Tank, and I said, we launched 14 months ago, and we've done 2.5 million in sales, I think they would lean in and say, that's fantastic. But we nearly 10 x our sales after the launch of the Harmon Brothers ad in the next year. And, you know, I think that it's been, the rest is history for us. They helped us get the message out and they really leaned into our authentic brand story. They did not try to change one thing about me, one thing about our brand. I think they take you as you are and then they make a decision. Is this a good partnership or not? And thankfully they thought it was and we would agree. So it's it's really interesting because one of the things it sounds like you're saying and one of my questions is, um, you know, what's really important because you went through some not great partnerships with advertising agencies and it sounds like they really took the time to get to know you and listen to you. Is that not the experience that you had with the other ad agencies? What what went wrong with that? I felt like the other agencies really did listen and they sold me in the beginning. Like, I'm like, we're going to be friends forever. This is amazing. They think Lumi's an awesome brand. And, but when it really came right down to it, they did not know how to dial that in. I think that they outsource everything. Whereas Harmon Brothers, while they do work, I know that they do outsource, you know, some talent because let's face it, they it takes a lot of people to bring these productions together but at the helm of it was Johnny Vance. He was the creative director. He was the one who, who I think had to prove to himself that we are who we said we were. Mm -hmm. So I think once they felt good about who we were as a brand, then um, they just, they leaned, leaned in hard to, we were who we said we were and they didn't have to change one thing about us. Whereas other agencies really did, like I had agencies say to me, the funniest one is this. If you ever got on our website and you read some of my blogs, mm -hmm. um, like the, so as a gynecologist, this started off as a feminine hygiene idea. But then when we did our clinical testing and realized like we had 72 hours of odor control and we're better than leading brands, hands down more effective. It's like not even debatable um, that I needed to get the word out on that story, that total body. So some of my blogs are titled like the vagina's not to blame Welcome to the Jungle Baby, um, Not Your Mama's Feminine Hygiene, you know, and, and I had written those, like, that is my brand story, that, it, those, those are, that's the grassroots of Lumi, and these agencies would read this, and they'd be like, oh, no, 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 you can't, we, we can't launch with that, we can't, we can't talk about it this way, you can't say it like that, like, I was too edgy for them, and they really tried to uh, censor me. And they wanted me to put on the white coat and be the authoritative physician that I'm just, I mean, while I am a physician, I am board certified, I'm also a little unsavory. And that's the story that I wanted to tell because as a woman, that's what resonated with me. That so, doesn't make any sense because every advertising, even the, the ad agencies that are kind of buttoned up that I've been a part of, and particularly mine, like i push the clients sometimes too far. I've never heard of an agency 
be like, let's button up, let's get that lab coat on, let's Prudent. not be so edgy. It's it's usually the other way around. So, I, I, and I think Harmon Brothers was willing to uh, take it right up to the guardrails. And in fact, I think I tempered them on a few things, but. Uh, we definitely schooled them on human hygiene in a way that they were like, this is awesome. I can think of 20 jokes around this, but their focus on sales first, um, comedy second. Like if you can be funny while doing it, then do it. Always go for the joke. But um, it just met the personality of our brand so strongly that I think it was a match made in heaven. Whereas I was twisting the arms of all these up. They were uncomfortable with the word vagina. So then that's where they wanted to position us as well. Yeah, vagina, great word, <laughs> great word. Sweaty balls, you sweaty know, balls. Like I have a blog called Sweaty Ball Odor, you know, it's a real thing. That's um, your blog, that's your blog name? That's the title, Sweaty Ball Odor, yeah. So then That's the title of your blog? Yeah. You're like a dream client, that's what you are. If you're, do, if you're like down to say something like that, that's like, God. That's, I mean, that's great. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm nerding out a little bit. Uh, you don't always get like a client who's down to say sweaty balls or balls or you know anything independently of an agency pushing you to do that. So I think too, when awesome. you start up, I, I was really insecure in the, in the beginning too. You know, I didn't know how to grow a brand. I just knew I had a really great idea that resonated with my friends and family. <laughs> you know, they are, they're all telling me this is awesome. And, but we needed to, seek out third-party data. So I like tortured myself with like, okay, who does clinical testing for the, the big box brands, right? Like we're talking like the behemoths in the room that are manufacturing most of the brands at Target and Walmart. Who is doing their clinical testing? And I did my homework and I thought, I'm just going to get punched in the face here. I'm going to hand it over to them and then they're going to tell me how good we are. I think it's good, but I got my founder goggles on, right? So when they came back and said, you really have something here, we've tested so many aluminum-free natural deodorants that don't work, and you are rivaling you know, the, the clinical products on odor control, good job. I felt like that is the story that we needed to tell, and Harmon Brothers really positioned us perfectly for that. But along that journey, you, know, you, you kind of ran into you know, some, some bumps along the road, uh, particularly around getting this thing patented. So the, the trials were about two years. It sounds like it was a quick two year process. And, and that is quick, you know, for getting something to go through trials. And I'm sure it's a long process normally, but talk to me about perseverance, like how you kept going, you know, when it wasn't, wasn't the third, uh, patent like when that was rejected that's normally like game over well we yeah we we went through this this process of going for the ip or the intellectual property piece of it because i felt that it was really unique and novel and i didn't want to launch it unless i knew for sure that this product was going to do what i said it did and so we first we seeked out um, third-party testing with a lab. And I said, here's my hypothesis. I think that what's happening with our product is we're actually blocking the metabolic pathway. Can you help me design a study to prove that that's the case? And so they did the test and they demonstrated these volatile odorous gases and Lumi eliminated it. Okay. So before we launched it, I wanted some amount of IP protection for what it's worth. Some would argue it's not worth anything. I felt strongly about it at the time. I'm glad that I did it. But it was a seven-year process from the time we filed rejections. Um, then our patent writer like lived in China for a time, and he wasn't accessible to us, so we had to hand this over to another attorney who really could care less whether we prevailed or not. Mm -hmm. And and so we we did not. But then when I got was able to get on the phone with the USPTO office and actually talk to the examiner and uh, her supervisor and tell the brand story, I think they were like, "Wow." you're a one-off inventor who solved a big problem and your arguments in defense of this, we're gonna go ahead and, and grant these claims. Thank you for the clarification. And so it was off to the races at that point. But then um, bef before that, just prior to that, we had gotten a, our third rejection and my husband and I lost our newborn daughter, Amy, and I felt like there was just no way I was gonna pick myself up um, after this. And I said, I'm done. So that third rejection for me was like, okay, th that's it. I'm done. I'm not launching this product. I nearly gave up 
In fact, I did, I would say. But then when the, we received patent claims, I thought, you know, this is really a significant invention at that time. I need to learn everything I can now about the deodorant industry, contract manufacturing, how to put a team together, build a website. I knew nothing about any of that, but I just dug in and asked a lot of questions and, and here we are. But I knew nothing about it, quite honestly. No, I mean, nothing. I knew, how to, I knew how to deliver babies and do hysterectomies and fix bladders and take care of patients in the office. I mean, that, that was like, and so I knew there was a problem that needed a solution and I created it, but now how to get it into the hands of the masses? I knew nothing about that. So are you the CEO of Lumi? I am. Are you running the show? I am. Okay, that's awesome. So like one of the things I'm, I'm having to decide as I like try to get a business partner and everything is like what I wanna be. I'm a creative, I've never run a business. Talk about your journey of like the mistakes you made, how you learned, the lessons to get to feeling confident enough to run a company and build sure. a company. Well, when I first had this idea and we were uh, looking for uh, partners because I felt like I certainly don't know how to do this, so I need to find somebody who can. And just repeatedly, they took from you, they punched you in the gut, they disappointed you, they overpromised, they underdelivered, they didn't lean into your authentic brand story, they thought you, they could do it better than me. They were very, a lot of discouraging conversation around, you don't want to do contract manufacturing, you're an idea person, you just need to feed the top of funnel for these manufacturers and you need to be sitting in the boardroom with people from, you know, P&G just feeding them ideas all day long. And that's your sweet spot, your sweet spot. You don't want to do contract manufacturing. And so I believed them. I'm like, boy, this must be really challenging and nearly impossible because I'm pretty capable. I've crossed some big hurdles. You know, people, you know, college, med school, residency, I've done some tough things in my life and, and done it well, that if they're telling me that I can't do this, they're probably right. And I don't know why I allowed that to discourage me initially, but then more and more as I, I sat in the room and I realized that it was my story that inspired manufacturers, uh, you know, people who, you know, packaging companies, and they were, they got behind us. They were saying, oh, I love that you're just a one-off inventor with an idea and you're risking everything. And they started rooting for us and uh, they got behind us. And I felt like now we have a fan base. And all of those voices of doubt just completely went away because I felt like I'm asking the right questions. Um, I may be going about it in a different way, and that's probably a good thing. And so I, I started to, to realize that I'm just, I just need to stay a few questions ahead, right? Um, and to make sure that if, any, if I was taking any risk, I wasn't risking the company, I was risking my own finances. I never wanted to take on investors. I never wanted to lose other people's money, but I was willing to lose my own. Well, uh, that's you know pretty, I guess, selfless when it comes to um, trying to build a company. A lot of people take on money. You know, It's something I was considering. I don't know if somebody would give me money, but um, you know, in terms of finding a partner of any kind, whether it's a manufacturing partner, whether it's a business partner, um, just because I'm going through that right now, I'm you know interviewing people that I'm meeting on LinkedIn to you know hop in and take a, you know some equity. What did you learn about evaluating people uh, from maybe the people that didn't work out? I think I learned that I I know, but I I had it in me all along. And when you're afraid and you think you need someone else, they usually will dilute your voice. And you probably, if you're not willing to do it 100% yourself, at least initially, and you're reaching out, like people will say, where do I get money? Where do I find a partner? It's like, I don't know how to answer that question for them. All I know is I learned the hard way that you don't need other people's money. You don't need other people's help initially. Don't let others tell you who you are. You need to tell that story first and then bring that person on when you know who you are as a brand. You have, because otherwise in the beginning, you allow them to influence you and they don't have the same investment emotionally, financially that you do. And so they're going to want to take you down a familiar path, but every brand is different. So I would say, figure out who you are as a brand first, and you have it within yourself to do it to a point and get on really solid footing about who you are as a brand 
and then go find that partner would be my advice. So I think, and, and you tell me what you think, because I, I, did you get a chance to look at my site or do you understand kind of the niche? So, <laughs> so I feel like I know, and I feel like I have conviction that, you know, we're this comedy ad agency and that's a niche and I'm going all in on it and I'm not going to let somebody tell me that it's wrong. Mm-hmm. But I'm at this inflection point where I do need some help. I, I, I don't know how to run a business. I really need like, I guess you could call it an operations person, a COO. Mm-hmm. So how do, you know, in terms of the, the lessons you learn for finding somebody like that or different partners to help you run the business, mm-hmm. how, you know, how do you go about, is it a gut feeling? Is it, you know, what is it? I don't think you can shortcut this process. I don't think that you can put somebody in a position within your company until you have cried it out yourself. So I sat on customer service. I took tickets. I sat on the website. I wrote all the blogs. I wrote all the copy. I took a lot of photos. You know, we were doing our own editing and you, you outsource bits of it that you can't do as, as quickly as you can, but you need to understand what it takes to put together a campaign, like all the moving parts. And I know you do, you know, the copy and if it's film, like who's going to be your videographer and who's your sound guy and, or do you outsource that to a possibly partner with another agency where you're functioning as the creative director and it's your vision, but they're executing on it. And I think you need to know what it's, what I think you need to know what all the moving parts are of your business before you can wisely choose a person to fill that seat. So I would say, I would say that I do know, like, I would say that I, it's really a one man band type thing. So I've had to do everything. And I mean, I'm, I'm the account manager, project manager. I'm, you know, if I, if I can't do a website myself in terms of design, which I can't, I'm creative directing and outsourcing it. You know, our latest campaign, I shot, acted in, edited, there you, go. you know, mastered, posted, you know, like I, I very much like have a lot of the tools to do it myself. And then from a new business perspective, you know, I'm the one that's like finding people, hiring it out. Um, I haven't done QuickBooks yet, but like, I, it feels like I'm at this stage where I have touched everything and I do know that I need somebody to take on. Sure. Half of the business that isn't creative. So I guess yeah. what I'm asking is I'm at that stage. I do know kind of what I need. And I, I just am going through this process of like having conversations with people and, you know, wondering, the only thing that I'm going on is, is my gut and their experience mm-hmm. that feels right. But I was just wondering if like, sure. if you have had mistakes, not, oh, yeah. you know, like you have had people that didn't work out. So I'm just wondering if you learned anything you know, specifically from, from those things that didn't work? Uh, for, I, as you were talking, in my mind, what I was saying to myself is I would, there are certain things that only you can do. And I would try to parse out the things that other people could do. And then try, to, and you'll pay a little bit more for it because you probably can't afford to bring someone in-house. But, and you won't necessarily know if you can trust that yet. So I would consider looking at the things that, other people can do like some of the administrative stuff. Certainly websites can be built, Shopify, you know, WordPress, like there's Wix, there's so many um, companies that make it pretty drag and drop. <clears throat> and the messaging can all come from you, but I would, and, and maybe I can even help you with that. Like other people that I've reached out to that have managed like our finances and then they offer a little bit of business strategy advice along the way. Um, and I would recommend that like parse out what, only you can do and try to outsource the rest. Got it. Got it. Yep. That's, Is that helpful? Yeah. 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 I, I, um, I'm, I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it. It is a one man band and you know, I am slowly starting to like, you know, try and take people on and people, I think during this time are more willing to hop into something without being compensated the way that they fully deserve. Just cause I, you know, I can't, um, mm-hmm. to test out a relationship and try it out for a smaller compensation. So I think it is a good time to try and find somebody and I'm, you know, going through that people process. Want, people want to be a part of something significant. And I think you want to, you want to try and find like-minded people. You're very entrepreneurial. You can find people to come on board that are also very entrepreneurial minded. They either want to do what you're doing and they don't quite have the courage yet. So they're going to learn along the way. Um, try to find people with a lot of soft skills. So 
they have like really they're so versatile you could pretty much put them anywhere and they're going to thrive and the only way you know you'll start to have interactions with different you know maybe film companies or th some things that you might outsource and you'll find individuals who are like-minded uh, but you're right it's it is pretty i think that people want to be a part of something significant and if what you're doing resonates with them they want to just be a part of it and then you want to never undervalue those partnerships um, and just always um, just know what their currency is and and provide that for them absolutely okay so you thank you so much for taking time to look at my website putting your client hat on which you know you you are um mm -hmm. when looking at an agency website what what would you what were your thoughts on it i guess um, I, I felt like you, you swore a lot. Um, you use the F word a lot. <laughs> Wait, where, where did I use the F word? Uh, just in your blogs, you know. Oh, you went that deep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're, so, so you my mom find... feels the same way. So yeah. that's legit. <laughs> and I'm probably old enough to be your mom. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'm not, I don't think that I am, but I, I can well, probably get, I'm, I am. I'm, I'm 52, so I don't you know. You are not. No, I'm not. Well, they, <laughs> thanks for being like, wait, are you? <laughs> I know, I was like, so maybe I am. No, I, I yeah, no, <laughs> maybe you're not a sister, 52. Maybe an older sister. Okay, maybe. so I said the F word a lot. That's very true. You said the um, F word a lot, but I do think you really get to the grit of what doesn't work for agencies. You're put, it's, it's, it's a lot like um, you're calling out the, the status quo. You're saying like, Historically, this, you know, non-trackable traditional marketing hasn't worked. And the reason we did these things is because we didn't have social media. People weren't carrying around their phone in their pocket 24-7. And, you know, you, at that time, you, you were meeting, in history, you were meeting people where they were, which is in front of their televisions and their newspapers. And now they're in front of their phones and tablets and laptops, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you call that out. And I think you do position yourself as a partner. Um, you think of, you value the, the, the truth in that relationship, whereas I think there's a lot of ad agencies that spit shine numbers, they overpromise, they underdeliver. the A players close the deal, then they bring the C players in to manage your account. And if you're, and you're, it doesn't sound like you're doing that at all. And in some of your messaging, you're saying, I actually wanna function more as a partner with your brand. And I think that, that that's good. My recommendation for you would be to go find some fun brands and move the needle and maybe don't charge them one thing or very minimal because then that's that becomes part of your story so you would use that as like your user generated content you know what i'm saying right. yep yep okay well so what about what about the case studies did you have a chance to like look at any of the work i didn't i didn't look at the case studies um but it if might be for the best it might be for the best you know okay. it is it is, I think I, I, there's less F-bombs than that. Almost no <laughs> F-bombs. So you'll be pleasantly surprised about that. Um, I didn't even, I wrote those blog articles so long ago that, you know, I, I think I have changed, uh, grown up a little bit, hopefully over the, over the last year. I, I but my it, mom would it, love you. It comes across as part of your branding. And I can tell you that, you know, not to make comparisons, but the, it, it rarely will make people uncomfortable when you never swear but it can potentially make people uncomfortable when you do. Mm. So I, you know, I would, that if, like just saying, like calling it out, I'd be like, but you have to be who you are. So if that's who you are and you're going to stand by that and that, then that becomes part of your brand. No, you know what? I don't know who I am. Okay, Shannon, I'm yeah. learning who I am. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I, understand that all right, I, I guess I know who I am, but I'm trying to figure out what my voice is, you know, as a, as a founder and as a, as an agency. So food for thought. Thank you. Um, okay. So you had this smashing success and continue to have a lot of success. Uh, but the Harmon brothers really launched your brand and, and, you know, helped you build your brand. What sort of advertising are you doing now? Are you still working with them or did they just, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Harmon brothers, they've done five ads for us and many, I mean, they've probably done close to a hundred little tidbit. I mean, we do a ton of testing, um, kind of storyboard testing where it might be like just the same graphic, different value proposition. And we're testing, you know, what's resonating because we are all these things in truth, like 
aluminum free, baking soda free, we're on whole body deodorant, you can use anywhere on your body. But what is really resonating with the customer? You got to test into that. Because what I think it, the message might be, I might be wrong. And so I, I would also say that with other agencies, I felt this tendency to micromanage everything they were doing because they were just so off track on who we were as a brand. Whereas with Harmon Brothers, I think Johnny would even say, um, I'm completely transparent. I do not hold back on who, and I'm fortunate in that I do have an authentic brand story to share. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think twice about it. It's just who we are. And then I have gotten out of Harmon Brothers' way. Like, I just lean into their expertise and say, I trust you completely. And that's the best way to work with an agency, I think. If you can't trust them completely and you're spending, I mean, a tow load of money on these mm -hmm. ads, mm -hmm. you, you got to back out. Yeah, absolutely. Trust yeah. is a huge thing. And yeah. it's a slimy industry. So, but yet, but yet the Herman brothers are not, uh, slimy yeah. as far as I can tell. And I've looked pretty deep. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, I'm a huge fan of them. They're definitely like mentors without knowing that they're mentors of mine. So, um, this, this section is a new section of the show. I don't have a, if you could call this a show, this podcast, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch three ideas out to you. Okay. And you're going to give me your reaction without thinking about it on a scale from one to 10. 10 is you're hired. One is please stop. Just stop it. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. OBGY men. It's Lumi for men, which I know you kind of are doing, but it's an entire ad campaign just called OBGY men. Yeah. It's something we've, we've thought of men. Trust your OBGYN, you know, trust your gynecologist dudes, you know? Uh, yeah. So I would say that that is a, a nine. That's great. Okay, Gina, the talking vagina. It's a spokesperson. Zero. <laughs> okay. It's a puppet. Does that matter? No. Okay. No, no. All right. Smell you later. It's an alarm clock that wakes you up 10 minutes late with a sizable poof of loomy scent. Uh, zero, one. Zero to one. So we'll call yeah, it a point like, five. I'd call it like maybe, a, maybe you like the smell you later is kind of overdone. And then but the yeah. concept yeah. of some of the idea after that, so maybe a different hashtag. Got it. Yeah. So maybe, so on average, it's a three point five, which means there's a chance. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for bearing with me with uh, those yeah, three I ideas. Um, so, in in terms of the end of the, you know, the way I like to end things is giving you the freedom to provide any piece of advice, whether it's life advice advertising advice, business advice, anything, um, based on your experience, what would you leave me with? Man. I know, I'm putting you on the spot. You, you, gotta, you have to be willing to risk everything for your idea because if you're willing to risk other people's uh, assets for your ideas, you're not all in. So just all in, you have to be willing to risk everything and then I think you have a chance <laughs> of being successful. Shannon, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Lumi deodorant is, you know, if you Google it, you're going to find it. Um, is it is it for men and women? Is that what yeah. you're? Yeah. yeah we're, we're a whole body deodorant for pits, feet, and privates. And uh, we've, uh, we definitely have a larger... Uh, uh, audience of women, but women are the hub of the home and they're buying it for their kids and husbands too. So we're growing in that area as well. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for hopping in here. Thanks, Tim. All right. That was great. I hope you had a, a good time. I had a really good time. I learned a lot. I, I had a really good time. I, I felt like uh, it seemed like it was an ad for Harmon Brothers, which I didn't really mean for it to be that. But one one thing I, I did want to say is we do, we could, when you said, are you still working with Harmon Brothers? So then I went down that path, but I am working with other um, agencies as well for the more um, quick bites, lower cost, higher performance content that mm -hmm. Facebook keeps telling us that we need. And Facebook, Facebook says, oh gosh, eight seconds, five, you know, 10 seconds, 15 second content is winning. But what's really winning for us is this two to four minute content. I just mm -hmm. think you need an agency like the Harmon Brothers to create it. 
So I, I keep hearing about that, like people breaking the mold of like what Facebook recommends, but these two to four minute ads, if they're truly yeah. entertaining, are performing better, which I was surprised. Where about. are you? Where are you at as an agency? Just kind of off the record, like where? What? What are you trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. So it feels like I'm at this point where, and all the case studies aren't on there, but I've actually, um, we have about five case studies. I think we have a good brand with a, with a niche message, but each of these five case studies, you know, we live by the philosophy. I say we, but me, um, that funny makes money. And Mm -hmm. so, and you've gotten to see that firsthand when you have really amazing media strategy and analytics paired with entertainment that, you know, is sales first, um, and you bring those together and have them work together under one roof, you just get better results and you are able to build your brand while also driving sales. So that's very much our mantra too. Um, and we have these five case studies for, you know, one is for an electric scooter brand. One is for, uh, a hygienic hand chalk brand that was normally a a climbing Mm -hmm. chalk that we're now marketing to, CrossFit gym. So we actually have things that, uh, you know, have gotten real results, double, triple conversions. And, um, and, uh, you know, I have, so, so I, I know what the business is. I feel very confident about it. We have the case studies to back it up. And we're really just at this point where we're trying to land a, a big client. So they then have the capital to really, you know, start to, build a, you know, leadership team, I guess you could call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, so it feels like we're, you know, I feel pretty confident that we're actually at a, a good space to take that next step. And like, I think we have a compelling, you know, I think we have a compelling um, pitch and the stuff that we need to back it up. So yeah. I would say that's, that's where it feels like I'm at. Do you have examples of these ads on your site? I didn't see them. So maybe I need to go into the case studies and, and yeah, look at Yeah, so those. there's a section called the goods. So it's, it's okay. like, you know, there's, it's got the messaging up top and it says, see the science. And then right below that it says the goods. And that's, okay. those are the case studies. So um, the first case study is for the electric scooter brand. We also launched or did a campaign for a pet insurance brand called Wagmo. And that mm-hmm. was, that's something that people really liked uh, because the concept's, you know, pretty simple. It's just pet insurance so good, you'll wish you were a dog. Because truly, awesome. pet insurance <laughs> is like better than human insurance in every way. So it's just yeah. a dude. I played the part. It's, it's usually me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not necessarily intentional, but... Um, so I can see I, you cast in a Harmon ad, actually. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll just send it an audition tape. I'll just be like, Johnny, you know, I just made this thing. I had a... I don't know where it came from. So what are, what's your sweet spot? Are you like a writer? Are you like, because I would say funny makes money. What Harmon Brothers is, it's like Harmon Brothers makes money. They make world-class content that converts. Mm-hmm. They happen to use humor and they've had good success with that in just about everything they do. In fact, I can't say that I've seen much that, I don't think I've seen anything from Harmon Brothers where they don't interject humor and a certain style. Yeah, um, they definitely have a brand, you know. Absolutely, themselves. and but, we're just leaning into that. That's the only difference. Is like we're saying yeah. we're a comedy ad agency, um, and it yeah. limits us in some ways. But it also, you know, like if you go to our website, it doesn't say we're innovative and you know, right. like we're all these things. It says yeah. we're really good. At, like we believe that funny makes money, and yeah. we're really good at it because it's all we do. And that's what my background is. So. Yeah you know, you asked like kind of, so I came up at Ogilvy. I don't know if you've heard of that ad agency, yeah. yeah. but that's where I came up. I was a writer and then I okay. uh, went to a smaller ad agency and I thought that, you know, being at a smaller ad agency, they were going to have to rely more on, on digital and like really understand how to make money go further. And they were more traditional than this traditional agency. So I just left in March of 2019 and started experimenting. And then eventually it became gush in this comedy ad agency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the hard part. What I, and the other part that I hate about agency is the royalty on ad spend. So if you want an agency to manage your ad spend for you, you're like, we're going to suck and charge you more, you know? So I was better off to bring somebody in house who was 100% focused on what it is that we did. Um, And it just opened up a huge budget. And I've also worked with agencies that just create content for us and then they hand it over and we manage it. Mm -hmm. But not everybody who creates content has is sales first. 
um, they're more about their own cinematography and their own right. production and they, they have their own agenda. And so we've had some misses there as well, but I sure wish you the best of luck. I mean, I, it is not easy and you are in a saturated market. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so why we try to have that differentiator. But I think, I think that, you know, that's why it's so important to have them under one roof. So I have a media partner and, you know, we've done media and content campaigns and he informs the creative. And then when he's running the media plan, you know, we're constantly tweaking, we're tweaking copy, we're, you know, this ad's performing well, let's make different versions of that. So, um, you know, it, it feels like behind the whole comedy ad agency thing is also well-informed creative, you know, like people create back at Ogilvy, I was like, you know, you get a brief and you're just like, okay, it's gotta be 30 seconds and we should make it, you know, you just don't know what works and what doesn't work. Cause the, yeah. you know, you aren't working with media really closely. So yeah. Yeah, you just got to find that, like even with Harmon Brothers, it was kind of by accident. They didn't say, let's go create world-class content. It was like, they they did some things and they made some mistakes and then they landed on something that really worked. And nobody really even knows who the Harmon Brothers are. They You do because you're in the industry. But I bet five years ago, you did not know who was behind. I, when I reached out to Poopery and I said, my gosh, I love your branding. I love your ad. Who did that for you? They would not tell me. They Why not? Me, they, they just wouldn't. They just said, oh, we worked with an agency with our in-house creatives. And they kind of took credit for it in a way that I was like, huh, okay. So then, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist like who did the poopery ad. <laughs> yeah. Then Squatty Potty came out and then it was, you know, oh, this is Harmon Brothers. They did chat books. They did Squatty Potty. They did um, uh, poopery. And Do you so, see that? Oh, keep going. Sorry. No, no. So, so then I reached out to them. I was in New York City just for something else and uh, for my very first time. And I thought, man, so many people have never even heard of us, but we're this great brand and it resonates with people and we got to get the word out. And how am I going to do this? I'm going to reach out to Harmon Brothers. And I reached out to them like on a Thursday and Monday morning, they were like, you know, send us, um, a hundred units of your product to test. And because if we don't love it, we won't work with you. And we need to know like, where are you guys at in terms of your scale and your ability to afford it? And cause it's not cheap. And then, I mean, it's like, it's a ton. I don't know if you know how much a hero is, but it's a ton. And then when you think about uh, what it takes then to put ad spend behind it. So you're adding that cost on top of it as well. And then any, they and they ran our ad spend for a time, so there was royalties on. They don't run our ad spend anymore, but um, when they did initially, it was you know, it's an it's nearly a million dollar investment for something like that when it's all when it's all said and done. Yeah. And I was like, I would have paid them two million. I mean, <laughs> I would have figured out a way to make it work. If they would have said to me, "I want equity in your brand," I probably would have given it to them. I just and they never did. Um, at that point, we didn't have that discussion, but that's another thing. There are plenty of brands out there with tremendous promise and no money where you just say, we are auditioning brands. We are looking for brands with promise that suit our style of marketing. And then we are looking to partner with you. And you literally take on an equity position where you're risking something you know you you have now have literally have skin in the game and you would really get behind that brand because you would be saying i know we can build this brand um, mm. versus i hope i can build this brand you know do i that really is... want to do pet insurance what's the market for pet insurance i don't know maybe it's huge but uh um, you know maybe you should hold like an open audition like that's such a good interesting idea like, I, you know, it's also one of those things where it's like, if there isn't work right now, we have a couple of things in the pipeline, but if there isn't work right now, create it, you know, create the opportunity for yourself. That's a really cool idea. Yeah. So, I mean, you could just put it on LinkedIn. So if you have, it's like you're, it's an engagement campaign, right? You're saying there's some really amazing brands out there trying to make it. And we're a really amazing ad agency that want to partner with products with potential. Yeah. Because we really do feel if we could get in at the grassroots piece of it. And then the hard part is like if they have like supply chain problems or, you know, R&D type stuff work that they need. You know, you'd have to make sure those pieces are buttoned up. Mm -hmm. But I get propositioned by companies all the time saying, you know, 
would you be willing to consult with us once a week for a couple hours and just make sure we're on track and we're doing everything right? And I would absolutely love to get into that, but I just am so busy running Lumi. When you so, say consulting, do you mean like consulting in uh, like another business? Yeah, like the, like businesses will reach out to me and say, would you be willing to meet with me for a couple hours a week just to coach me, you know, there, yeah. and, uh, and I just, I just don't have the time. I, I could say yes, but honestly, I'd be doing a pretty, pretty meager, uh, job at it just because my, my commitment right now is to the, I mean, Lumi is just like crazy growing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons to be insecure right now. So I feel like I need to be in the room on about every conversation. So yeah, no, I totally get that. It's actually interesting. Like a podcast, the biggest benefit of having a podcast is it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's a easier way to network with somebody. You're like, I have this thing let's create together. And because the concept is, you know, for lack of a better word, self-serving, um, mm -hmm. I'm just making amazing connections and learning so much beyond just it being a platform to talk about gush. So I feel like this is the best kept secret is like start a podcast. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I was like, Ooh, if Johnny Vance is talking to this guy, I'll talk to this guy, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't do podcast. I turn down like a hundred percent now. I don't know why. I just, it, it's, it's really what it is, is I have to be mentally prepared to do it. And it's, it's making sure that I'm giving it the time, but you just felt so willing to, you don't need to prepare. Let's just hop on right now. And let's just have a conversation that I was like, sure. You know? Oh and yeah. So it felt very casual to me, which is my style. So I, uh, and then it, I was, I was riding on the coattails of having just listened to Johnny's and thought, yeah, I'm going to do this, but I don't do this. I don't do it enough. It's been fun. It, it has been super fun. I, I guess like one other question is what, what do you think about the podcast as just somebody who listened to it? Um, I, I thought it would, I think it's good. I think you're basically saying I'm all ears, right? I am, I'm drinking this in. I am the student here. Whereas so many podcasters, you know, they, they're not, they're, that's not their purpose. It's a very unique um, point of view to say, I'm here to learn and I'm oh, drinking yeah. all this in. And I think it's very humble. Oh. I, I think it's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I mean, thank you so much for, for hopping in there and like letting, giving me a shot, you know? Um, I, I know you're very in demand and you've had a lot of success and I just, I don't know. I really appreciate it. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. So, and I'd love to keep in touch. If there's anything you want to bounce off me, I'm pretty opinionated and I'm really quick to, I don't necessarily want to get in the weeds, but I'll definitely share my thoughts. So if there's like something you're working on and you're like, what do you think? I mean, you can, I could be a sounding board for you. Um, if that it's would, helpful. Oh my God, that would, that would be amazing. And if I ever, I'm pretty good about not asking for too much. So, but if I do, you just let me know, you know? Um, you're just looking for that, like that neutral eye, right? That absolutely, objective. absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. You've, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Well, well have, we'll have a great touch. weekend. You too. You too. I'll uh, talk to you soon, and all the best of luck with everything. Thanks, Tim. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.